Guys, welcome back. This is gonna be a project video, and in this project video, we're gonna build a wine rack. Uh, we used to build quite a few of these as gift items and just something we'd put in our booth and stuff. They're just kind of a good conversation piece. The, uh, it's a good way to use some scrap chap leather if you've got some bigger chunks of scraps of any kind of chap leather will work or even some thin latigo. And, uh, and then you've just got two little panels, one on the bottom, one on the top. It's got a hole here. You can hang it off the corner of your, of your bar overhang or uh, on a wall or something in your kitchen and it'll hold three bottles of wine, um, wine or smaller bottles of whiskey or something. Uh, I don't have any bottles of wine to put in here to show you, but, uh, but anyway, these are, these are really neat little items. Like I said, they're real easy to build. They're not very hard. So this will be a pretty short little project video. There will be a pattern pack for this. If you're interested, uh, mainly for just the tooling patterns, like I said, you can kind of look at this and they're not really that hard to put together. But if you would like that, there'll be a link in the description for that. So let's get started. We're going to go ahead and build this and uh, show you exactly how to make one of these wine racks. All right, guys, so we've got some uh, chap leather here and you can actually use just a really thin latigo. And that's actually what that is right there is just some really, really nice. Um, it, it's kind of like latigo, but I'm not I think it's more of a chrome tan, but it has more of a latigo feel and pull up to it. But that's what I'm using on this one. And you just need to pick something that you're going to use for the front. I usually like to use a contrasting um, colors. So I'll use a different color for the backing than I will for the front. Um, just for a style thing, but you're basically just going to cut out a big rectangle and make sure your edges are straight and you want to make sure these are close. If you've got the pattern pack, um, I just show you the basic dimensions of this piece here with all the measurements as far as where your, your holes are going to go and that kind of thing. And so here we've got just a, uh, this is kind of some leather that I would use to build some actual chaps. It's just a really nice, nice chrome tan chap leather as well. And we're going to cut out the back piece. Back and the front piece are exactly the same. Uh, it's just that you only cut those holes out of one side, which is the front side. Okay, so now I'm gonna now I got them both cut out. I'm gonna take my pattern now and put it on whichever piece you're gonna make the front. And I'm gonna go ahead and trace out where those circles go. All of our lineup points. These are uh, those lines in the middle are gonna be where we stitch. And you just need to mark all of those spots so we have some marked points on here. And then we'll go ahead now and cut out our circles. And um, like I said, you can cut, if you've seen our video where we cut larger circles out using a knife and a spike, that really isn't gonna work really well with this type of leather because it's so soft. And so you get a lot more movement in there. It's just a little harder to do. And so I prefer to just use a razor blade or an X-Acto knife or something like that. Whatever you're more comfortable with in cutting out circles, just take your time and try to get them as straight as you can. You can also cut different shapes here if you'd rather do a diamond or, or maybe a big oval or a square um, or some kind of other funky little shape. You could sure do that. All these holes are going to do is just basically be a window so that when the bottle of wine is in there, you can see the label. Um, and so you know which, which type of wine you don't necessarily have to pull it out to uh, see which kind of wine you wish to partake in that evening. Okay, so now we're gonna cut out our top and bottom tooling panels. These are the pieces that are gonna to be tooled. They're really small. You can certainly get this out of some scrap. I'm gonna cut these out of the belly here because that belly feels really firm um, and it's a great spot for something like this. And this leather here is just a six to seven ounce uh, veg tan leather. We're gonna have double of the, the chap leather behind it. And so it doesn't necessarily need to be super thick. Uh, so you don't want it to be too heavy, but you want it to be heavy enough to where when you've got three wine bottles in there, they, it doesn't crash to the floor. So 
um, but something in, anywhere around six to nine, six to seven or eight to nine ounce would be perfectly fine for this. And there's all our pieces. And so now we'll just prep these up. And I'm just using blue painter's tape because it's quick. And that'll just keep those pieces from stretching any while we're tooling them. And with it, we're not gonna do any real hard tooling on it, so it should be fine. And we can pull that off after we get done. And so now here on the back panel, we're gonna go ahead and mark the top line where basically where those tooled panels are gonna go. We're gonna mark those on the top and on the bottom. You don't need to mark the circles. You don't need to mark any of the middle stitch lines. And this is again, the back panel. The reason we're doing this is so that we know where our glue is gonna go. We're basically gonna build the body first. And so the body is done and then we can go and tool those little panels and then just attach them. And so we'll do the same to the back side of the front piece, the one with the holes in it. And we will mark uh, the top line and the bottom line. And that way we know where the glue is gonna go back there too. And so like I said, be sure you're on the front panel, you're marking the back side. And this is just, just so that you know where to put your glue, that's it. And so we're gonna go ahead and glue both the top little section and the bottom section on both panels, and we'll glue these together after that glue sets. And so here, the only real thing to worry about here is just to make sure that you get them aligned correctly. And you wanna kinda check your pieces and make sure that they're, they're both the exact the same and um, we'll go ahead and glue those together. And that's the only place that I glue. And that'll glue those and get them ready. And now we'll mark, because we marked the middle lines on our front earlier, now we can just connect those two lines and now we know where to stitch. And to help with the stitching so that it stays in place and it doesn't shift, sometimes the leather will shift, I'm using a really small uh, shoe tack which is called a clenching nail it's a clenching nail so they're they're designed to clinch once they hit it something hard but I, they're great for this because you can just drive them in just enough to go through the leather and it'll hold that leather in place while we stitch and then we can pull those nails as we're stitching and it'll hold everything together we don't have to fight glue and trying to keep glue only where we want it and all that stuff so we'll just come over here to the uh sewing machine and we're sewing on a cobra class four and uh, it, it works great in this big machine sews even just those two pieces of chap leather beautifully so i didn't have any problems with bobbin or anything like that the tension was perfect um, and so we'll just stitch along and as we get to a nail we'll pluck that nail out stitch to the next one and pluck it out be very careful though if you're sewing especially on something with a servo motor like this that you don't just hammer down and forget that nails there or not be able to stop it before you get that nail pulled because you will break a needle if you hit it so be sure and take your time and uh, and be sure and pull them you know go go to each nail pull it and keep going So now we'll just cut those stitches. And our body is pretty well built. We're ready to go. So I'm just gonna trim. If you see something that's overhanging a little bit, I had a little bit of that bottom piece that was kind of hanging out a little bit. I'll trim some of that. It's not that crucial, but I want it to look, you know, as clean and square as possible. And if you can, some chap leathers you really can't edge very well. This uh, Latigo type uh, chap leather that I'm using on this project, it actually edges really, really nicely. So I took a really small number two Ron's edger and edged that. Um, you could certainly do with a number one. And so right here, we're just gonna go ahead and get our tooling started on these panels. And we'll show you a little bit of the tooling here um, as we usually do. And we'll go from there. We're not gonna get too deep into the tooling on this video. Many days is yet to come.
many times has come to pass Too many moments put aside Getting out alive Getting out alive Writing letters in the sand Lost to oceans gentle So the tooling's done. Now we're just going to rip that tape off of there. They've had time to dry and stuff, so be careful pulling that off when they're kind of wet. Um, we're going to go ahead and just oil these. I'm not going to do any antiquing on this, just uh, per the customer's request. And so we're just going to do them kind of a, just a light oil, just kind of a natural light to medium oil finish on these. And uh, it'll give it a really nice, classy look. And so there, our oils had time to kind of migrate through and get to the color we want. And so we're just going to put tan coat on there. And again, tan coat is kind of my go-to finish on what I use on pretty much everything. And now we'll go ahead and take these and sand them after that tan coat has dried really, really well. It's been a couple hours. And so we'll go ahead and sand the edges a little bit, straighten everything up, make sure our curves are nice and even. And, um, and then we'll get these edged and slicked. And I'm going to edge these with a, uh, a number two. Since it's like six, six, seven ounce leather, I'm going to use the number two Ron's edger. You could certainly use a little bigger edger, uh, maybe even a number three. Um, but I wouldn't go much over that. You get just a little bit too much cut off of there on those thinner type skirting leathers or veg tan leathers. And we'll get that edged up and slicked, and then we'll dye the edges on them. And here I'm just using our normal uh, glycerin bar soap, water, and a uh, canvas rag here to slick. If you haven't seen that video, we do have a video on our channel for how, to, how we slick our edges and stuff. And uh, some people don't always use the glycerin. A lot of people just use the water. I find the glycerin just helps to speed things up is all it does. It doesn't, um, it may add a little bit of more protection to your edges, but I use it mainly just to help to speed the process up. And we'll select those up real nice and they'll be ready for dye. And now we'll come over here to a little dye station. And I'm just using Five Bing's dark brown oil dye. Um, just their pro dye, that's all I use. Now I do give the edges plenty of time to dry. 
So if they're kind of wet, you don't want to do that. That dye will kind of run a little bit. So you want to give your edges time to, to dry really good before you edge it with that dye. All right, so now here we're back to the body piece. Now those top marks that you made, there where we put the glue, we're gonna go ahead and draw a line across there. That's gonna line up these tooled panels. And it should, you may check them just to make sure they still fit and they haven't stretched too much after tooling, but they should fit really well. And so uh, they shouldn't have expanded sideways or, or from top to bottom or anything, but you can make adjustments if necessary if they do. But usually that blue painter's tape will hold them really well. Now we'll take a little bit of sandpaper, depending on the chap leather, this Latigo type oil tan here is pretty uh, oily. And so I've got to scratch it up a little bit to get the glue to stick is the only drawback to that stuff. And so we'll go ahead and scratch it with some sandpaper. That'll help that glue to bind to that leather. And then we'll glue these panels and glue them in place and we'll be ready to sew them. All right, so our glue has had time to dry. I did do two coats on those, especially with that oil tan to make it stick really well. And so just line them up and put them in place where they go and just be sure they're really straight to your line that you marked. And on these, uh, the body really doesn't have a top or a bottom. That's justified by which panel you put at the top if they're, you know, if you do have a top or a bottom one. So you just kind of put them on either end. It'll work just fine. They're, they're the same either way the body goes. And so here we're just going to Tap that in really good and get a good adhesion there with our hammer. And then we'll go to the sewing machine and sew these. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stitch groove these and uh, just give it a, a little bit of a nicer, more professional look. You, d you don't have to stitch groove, but I highly recommend it as you as you learn and, and go along. I would highly recommend investing in, in a stitch groove, even if it's just a little craft tool, um, then it'll really, really make your stitches look a lot better. And then here back to the uh, sewing machine here. And again, this is my Cobra Class 4. Uh, I haven't made any kind of adjustments or anything. It, it seems to sew, you know, the two pieces of chap or all three of these pieces together with the same, same tension setting and everything, and it works great. So you could certainly sew it on a smaller machine if you've got, you know, I could have sewed this on my 3115 without any trouble. I just wanted a little bit heavier stitch on this uh, just for aesthetics. And so that's why I chose that machine for this project. All right, so we'll cut those stitches right quick. And then we're just gonna take a sharp razor blade and be really careful not to uh, get into the edges of your tooled panel because you've already slicked and edged and dyed that. And so you just wanna, wanna try not to nick it with your knife as you're trimming off the excess chap leather. And so we'll just trim right around that to the base of that tooled panel. And uh, this thing will be pretty much ready to go.
and again depending on your chap leather if it edges good go ahead and edge it um, if it doesn't if you start edging it and it starts looking just kind of bad and it's more cutting the edge is not really or ripping your, your the edge of it it's not really edging really nicely then stop don't even try to edge it just just leave it alone um, because I've tried to edge some chap leathers that just do not edge very well at all and it's better if you just leave them alone and that's pretty well ready to go now the last thing to do is just to punch a hole there at the top panel and I use it a number 10 or a number 12 here depending on how it's going to hang or what it's going to hang on and that's done all right guys so that's our wine rack as you can see it really didn't take a whole lot to make these one of the biggest deals is whenever you're cutting these circles, you can certainly cut these in different shapes. If you want to, if you want to cut it out a little bit more oblong or a little bigger circle or no circle at all, that's absolutely fine too. Cutting this hole can be a little bit difficult on the chap leather. Um, if you've seen our other video where I show you how I cut a, a bigger circle out with a knife and a spike, uh, that doesn't tend to work very well on the chap leather because it's so flimsy. So I, I don't personally recommend doing it that way. I just do it with a razor blade or an X-Acto knife or something like that that you have a lot of control with and just be careful so that you can get it get it cut correctly. But I hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, if you got any questions on it, be sure and comment below or send me an email. I'll be glad to help you with it. Remember, there is a pattern pack available for this if you're interested in that. Uh, that link will be down in the description of this. Like I said, mainly, I mean, the, the, the whole size of this and everything, it's not that hard to, to come up with something and, and build one of these on your own. But mainly, uh, there'll be a lot of tooling patterns in there. Uh, there's quite a few different floral patterns in it if you'd like to get that. And you can get that by using the link in the description. Thank you so much. Be sure and sign up for the Leathercraft newsletter. If you uh, if you haven't already, be sure to uh, try to put a link in the description too for that. And uh, be sure and subscribe to this channel. We appreciate you watching. If you've got any suggestions for a project video, we're going to try to get some more out uh, this spring now that things have kind of warmed up outside and we've kind of got a little bit more, more time going on where we can work on some more projects and stuff like that. So if you've got any ideas on some new project videos, let us know. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you all very much.